And I didn't t say much about myself. I'm, I'm chair of the department and um, my specialty is, is mostly in geomorphology and glacial geology. So most of us at Augustana have been using Google Meet a lot in the last couple of weeks and some of us are not as skilled at Zoom. So please bear with me as I stumble through this. We're really happy to have everybody, everybody here today uh, and it's Earth Day, happy Earth Day. We couldn't ask for a more appropriate day to be talking about geology than Earth Day. And this is a picture of, of one of our labs in, in, our, in our building and these are some of our current students and this is Abby right here who's on with us today. And these are students who I think in Dr. Arkell's history of life class, does that sound right? Life. We were classifying donuts that day. Classifying donuts. <laughs> Good. So this is the history of, maybe you want to explain that a little bit better? <laughs> sure. So um, History of Life is, is a course that I teach. It's a 200 level course. So these students have had one, uh, one or two geology classes before this. And um, this class is kind of a big, broad overview of the history of life for three and a half billion years or more. And thinking about how changes in the earth and its, um, its paleogeography changes and how the continents have shifted and how mountains have been um, built and destroyed, how that all has affected the evolution, evolutionary patterns of life. So in this particular activity, they were thinking about how we classify organisms. So the easiest way to do that was to start off simple. So they were looking at different types of donuts and thinking about how, how different toppings and, and uh, different shapes might uh, help us group them differently, just like we do with, with organisms. Did they get to eat the donuts afterwards? They did. <laughs> I wouldn't be that cruel. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. Okay, we're going to take a look at some of the some of the uh, pictures of field trips. This is kind of what I had in mind of where we're gonna be going today. And this, these are the faculty. Joining us here in this picture is also Susan Wolf, who works in the department as the museum curator and educational programs outreach coordinator as well. So first of all, you might ask yourself, and you should ask yourself, what, what is geology? What is this discipline of geology and the broader geosciences about? And that's a tough question to answer because geology is really, really interdisciplinary. And our students end up oftentimes studying some combination of biology, chemistry, mathematics, physics, geography, and they bring history into it oftentimes, at least in terms of earth history. So we joke about this. This is one of our t-shirts in the department. We kind of joke about this, but it is a really interdisciplinary science. And, and it, it draws upon a knowledge of, uh, of other disciplines as we try to answer questions about how different features in the earth have formed, how they've deformed, what we can do with some of the raw materials, the, the natural resources we have, and so forth and so on. So geologists do a lot of things in society, of course. Um, geologists get stuff. They, they find raw materials, natural resources that we use. They also solve a lot of or help solve a lot of environmental problems working in teams and are working on a lot of big issues like anthropogenic climate change and so forth. So we get into a lot of these kinds of subjects in our program. This is the center of our home. If you haven't been to Augustana's campus yet and, and once we open up again in, in the fall, those of you who are currently juniors, please come back for another visit. You can arrange a visit through the admissions office. You can visit classes. This is the center of our building. We're really fortunate to have the Frickcell Geology Museum, which is just a tremendous collection of rocks and minerals and fossils. And I'm gonna ask my colleagues to jump in at any point if you have anything you want to add or, or, or the students as well. This, this museum is not just a sort of a static museum. We use it in many of our classes and this is sort of just the showcase of the museum. We have uh, extensive collections in the in the basement that students are able to use and actually work into their own research projects. So it's a, a very, as most m museums really are, it's a very active uh, entity. And Augustana is very fortunate to have this museum because most small colleges don't have geology museums at least nothing of, of this caliber, nothing of this size. We have the space and we have the collections 
of things to display in it. It's really phenomenal. And it's the heart of our department. It's something that every one of us walks in every day and, and thinks this is a, a great place to work. And I hope the students think that too. So Kavit just asked a question about what grade you have to be in to, uh, to work in the museum. And um, starting in your first year, you're welcome to work in the museum. We strongly encourage all of our students to do that. The vast majority do. You get, um, you get paid for work study and it's just a really awesome opportunity to interact with the public and learn a lot about the specimens too. Yeah, thanks. So what are the big opportunities we want to, you to think about is if you end up coming to Augustana, we strongly encourage you to consider our, we offer a summer course, a physical geology course in the Northern Rocky Mountains, and it's open only to incoming first year students. So once you're on campus, it's too late to take. It's actually the summer just before the first year starts. We're not positive we're going to be operating, we're going to be offering it this summer, but we're at this point moving forward, hoping that we will. And then um, if all goes well, certainly in the summer of 2021, we're going to be offering it again. This course has been taught every year since 2002. So every person who's in this picture, except, well, except for the, the faculty, Dr. Wolf and myself are in here, and we've got um, a couple teaching assistants, but most of these people are our, our first year students, they're just beginning their college experience at Augustana. And um, of these every year, a few of them think maybe they want to major in geology or maybe environmental studies. And some of them have no intentions of even becoming a science major and they take this because it's a great course to take. But it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity. It's a lot of fun. It's a great way to learn geology and you learn a great amount of information in the two weeks that we teach it. For this coming summer, it starts on the 7th of August and it ends on the 23rd, which is just a few days before the first year orientation weekend. The total cost of the course is $1,500, which is a little bit steep, it seems, until you realize that it covers your tuition, four credits of a science class, all of your travel expenses, the lodging, your meals, and so on. We're only able to do this because we are fortunate to have endowed funds in the department that we can draw the earnings from and we subsidize this trip. So we're gonna show you a few pictures of this trip and both of our upper class, both of our students who are here today helping us out have been on this course before. So maybe Allison, you wanna say something about it? Yeah, I'll jump in here. Um, I think this is a great opportunity for all incoming freshmen to Get involved and meet people who are going to Augustana. Um, I met a great group of people when I did this and I was also in that group that Dr. Strasser mentioned who did not intend on being a STEM major. Uh, here I am. So I uh, highly, highly encourage it for all students. No matter what your interests are, you'll meet some great people and you'll learn a lot. Fantastic. Kevin had a question. Want to add anything to that? Yeah, Kevin, I'm sorry, Kevin had a question. It, it's regarding um, payment and, and we, so we accept students on a first come first serve basis. In a normal year, we would be filled by early May, maybe mid-May at the latest. Um, I think things are just taking a little bit longer this year. So we'll keep on accepting students until we fill. And so if you're thinking about it, I would, and once you decide to come to Augustana, definitely sign up. Um, if, if we cannot go because of COVID health concerns, we will refund that 1500 to, to every, all the students. Thanks. So we'll show you a few more pictures of that trip. And these are all from last summer. Um, these are all pi pictures that we took once we got out to Wyoming. It's a, we, the course starts on campus and we travel out and spend several days in South Dakota in the Black Hills on the way in the Badlands of South Dakota. And then we end up in North Central Wyoming in the Bighorn Mountains. Along the way, we pass Devil's Tower and um, we spend several nights at a field station. Most of the time we're camping, but we spend several nights at a field station once we get out to Wyoming that's in the Bighorn Mountains. And the students are working in the field. So we have usually lectures in camp for several hours, we're going over material, then we go and we do exercises in the field where students are, <coughs> excuse me, interpreting the rock types, 
and figuring out what the geologic stories are. So here are several pictures from this past year. And also from this past year, there's a lot of work involved in the class, but there's also a lot of time to have fun and to get to know the other students. And when you spend that much time together, sleeping in tents together and writing in vans together, you get to know each other pretty well. Abby, you wanna offer any of, of your thoughts on the course? Um, I'm still friends with most people that I went on this course with. A bunch of them are in the department with me and the ones that aren't, I meet for lunch at on campus and I like, I talk to all of them. And it's just, one of them is my roommate. I went with, my roommate went on this trip with me. <laughs> you make really good friends, you meet great people, and it's just a lot of fun. We offer other field trips as well. Some of them are required trips through individual courses on campus. So we'll spend a day or two or a weekend and go someplace uh, that we can actually see the rocks in the field. So this was a course that I taught last fall that we took a weekend field trip to go up to Devil's Lake State Park in central Wisconsin. And we had horrible weather while we were there, but everybody had a great time. It was really a terrific trip. There's some fantastic geology up near Baraboo, Wisconsin. Dr. Arco regularly takes a trip a little bit closer to the Iowa City area, um, the um, Coralville Reservoir in the Fossil Gorge, and has students studying the paleontology you want to say anything else about this trip? Um, it's just a really cool spot. It actually was completely covered just by farm fields until 1993 and it got flooded out. So it's this really cool area where you can just see these um, pavements that are littered with shells, um, beautiful in situ or in place sponge reefs and brachiopods and corals. And it's pretty amazing. Um, and it's only about an hour away. So it's a great spot to go at, at any level if you're looking at paleontology. And I just noticed here's Abby again. <laughs> <It is. Yeah. laughs> She's so photogenic. <laughs> and uh, on that same trip, I think maybe you can mention this quarry, talk about it a little bit. Yeah, we kind of stumbled on this place. Um, it's a little bit tricky for paleontologists these days because it's getting harder and harder to find areas where you can actually collect fossils and bring them home. Um, but, but the students in particular were really interested in, in working on their own personal collections. So um, we found this, this old abandoned quarry and it's a site that you can go to and just collect stuff. Um, this is another place where we saw really big, beautiful sponge reefs that were meters and meters tall and long and um, just a really cool opportunity to, to see some things in place, but also bring home some samples, which is always really fun. And oh, this picture didn't come out very well. Want to tell a little bit about this trip to the Field Museum? Yeah, this was part of a um, dinosaurs class that I taught last year in the winter time, and um, we had a really cool opportunity that the, one of the focuses of the class was to work on fossil preparation. So the process of what do you do when you get um, bones back from the field, you have to take them out of their field jackets, you have to um, get the bone actually out of the rock or the sediment. So the students actually learn to do that on campus in our preparation lab in the basement. And then um, we got an opportunity to go to the Field Museum in Chicago, and we spent some time looking at their exhibits, but also went behind the scenes and talked to the fossil preparator. And she showed us um, a bunch of the stuff that she was working on, which was really, really amazing. Um, you probably know if you're familiar with the Field Museum, it's one of the foremost um, natural history museums in the world. So having it within a two and a half hour drive is a pretty cool opportunity. And having the context there as well to get behind the scenes. Because yeah. anybody can go see the scenes, but getting behind the scenes is where some of the really interesting stuff is. And even more local than that is um, not too far away from the Quad Cities here. There's some neat places to study the geology as well. I'm going to move forward in the interest of time. Um, these are more local field trips. Wyoming Hill, which is just about a half an hour drive away. And Dr. Wolf, your turn to talk about this trip down to Missouri. Every, every once in a while, we go and find the hard rocks that we call hard rocks, those, those uh, metamorphic and igneous rocks, those rocks associated with volcanoes. As it turns out, Missouri is a great place, almost sort of surprisingly. It was a great volcanic and igneous terrain there. And these are weathering out. 
to some they look like elephants, but we're, are, we're planning another trip there this coming fall in the petrology class, which is a study of rocks. So we're very excited to get down there again. And if it weren't for the quick action of these students here, that boulder would have rolled down onto a whole city, right? <laughs> in a couple, 10,000 years or so. <laughs> okay. All right, we're gonna move to uh, another opportunity to work in the field, which we're really, really excited about. And these are the January term programs. So as you may know, Augustana is on a semester calendar now, which is starting this year. It's a new thing for us. And when we adopted this calendar, we arranged it so it we do a one course at a time program during the entire month of January, well, for three weeks in January. So the geology department is at least initially <clears throat> offering two different field opportunities on alternate years. So I'm going to ask one of my colleagues to jump in and tell us a little bit about the Bon Air program. I'll start and then um, Dr. Wolf can chip in if he wants to. So this was the first trip we took to uh, Bonaire, which is all the way in the far Southern Caribbean. It's um, near Aruba and Curacao, just north of uh, Venezuela. And um, it's a beautiful um, tropical island. It's actually a desert. So there's big cactus forests there. Um, we taught two courses and Dr. Wolf taught an intro level, 100 level class, and I taught a 300 level course for, for our majors. And we spent a lot of time on land and in the water. You can see Thomas on the left there working underwater. He's run a transect tape and he's identifying corals. And then um, the two pictures on the right hand side it, are sort of what make this course fantastic, which are um, that there are fossilized, beautiful fossilized reefs that are about 100,000 years old or so and we see the same species of corals on land that we do in the water so we can see um, the modern processes and their ancient analogs and it's just a really cool opportunity to, to look at some awesome environments that we don't see anywhere around here. Um, it's also a tectonically active island so Dr. J spent a lot of time thinking about um, what are called platforms, areas that have popped up as, um, as the tectonics have been active there and we can track the timing of all of those events events. Um, and it's also volcanic, which is what Dr. Wolf is interested in. And so his class spent a, a lot of time thinking about the volcanic history of the island, um, primarily from the Cretaceous, so several hundred million years ago. Um, this, this picture actually isn't from Bonaire at all, but it, it uh, is a good sort of depiction of the research that I do and a lot of the stuff that we did in Bonaire. You'll notice that in the last slide, um, Thomas, one of our majors, was scuba diving, and that's one of my areas of expertise because the research that I do is underwater. So um, we can do things like identify the corals underwater. That's what Thomas is doing. And then in the next slide, um, a couple of alums, Sierra and Lauren, were both uh, working underwater with me. This was in Grand Cayman, which is further north in the Caribbean, and they're actually censusing seagrass, and we were collecting sand um, to do some biodiversity analyses. I'm interested in paleoecology, and um, those samples are actually in my basement <laughs> right now, and I'm, uh, I'm working on counting those up as we speak. Dr. Wolf, you want to add anything? Sure. Well, Dr. Arco mentioned her expertise in scuba. I'll mention my novice tease in scuba. So once we were planning this trip, I actually took scuba diving lessons at Augustana so I could actually see the wonders underneath the water. And many of our students did that as well. So that's that's the sort of opportunities that Augustana provides. So if if you're planning on coming and, and doing one of these trips, we strongly urge you to get that training and it really is spectacular. But up on the surface, above the water level, here we're actually out of the, an out, a really spectacular outcrop. These are, this is a lava flow that cooled in a really awesome way. These are called columnar joints, kind of like Devil's Tower. Um, these interesting hexagonal patterns and, and we have some students who are researching that cooling pattern here. Great. So just want to emphasize, yeah, the opportunity to, to get certified in scuba is really phenomenal. About what, half of the students had it or maybe just something like that? Half. So the, mm -hmm. the Bonaire program has two courses, an introductory course that um, is, tracks 
non-geology majors in an upper level course. So uh, quite a few of the students just went and they were, uh, they were skin diving and, and having a great time as well. The other January term program that we'll be offering starting this coming year, we'll be going to the Mojave Desert. So we're gonna be offering two off-campus J-term programs on alternate years, one of which goes to a foreign country and because of everything involved there is a little more expensive than the, than the domestic one is a little less expensive. We're planning on riding Amtrak down to Southern California and staying in a field station down there. I'm kind of faking my way through this quite honestly because we haven't offered the program yet. So the pictures, like this picture is, was taken in Death Valley, California on a spring break field trip that we ran actually last year. And, um, but we'll be going to some of the same places or very similar places. This course is going to be emphasizing interpreting the geology in the field, uh, the structures, the way the rocks have been folded and what the stratigraphy is, what the rock types are and, and interpreting the geologic history. So we're really looking forward to this program as well. I'd like to point we'll out- Diving on this program though. Go ahead. The, the heading on the last slide said it, but we'll just, I'll just say it out loud. The department has funding and we subsidize all of these trips. So um, it, we, geology out in the field is, is fundamental to the learning process and we in, help students financially. So Cameron, I'm looking at Cameron right now. Does that answer your question initially? Um, yeah, that was pretty good answer. Okay, great. So <laughs> yes. it asked about the, um, the field opportunities and that's what we wanted to talk about here. So here's another picture. This is another one from Death Valley, uh, but we'll be seeing a lot of this kind of geology on the um, Mojave program. So next we're gonna take a few minutes and talk about what students do on campus. And there are, in addition to the field work, which um, a lot of students will take courses and field experiences, but also every student is, is required as a geology major to complete a directed research project, uh, basically a senior research project. At Augustana, we call it senior inquiry. And for many of our students that involves field work that they'll travel to someplace to gather some samples, and um, then they'll bring samples back onto campus and they'll analyze them using many of the the facilities that we have in our department. So we're gonna go through some of those facilities and see some pictures of students working on a wide variety of projects. These are actually students in an environmental studies course who are working in our geochemistry lab, analyzing the geochemistry of, in this case, uh, I think surface waters. Um, Dr. J, do you wanna give us more details? I don't remember the specifics of what this was. Uh, two of them were looking at the quality of, of water uh, from streams that were flowing out of the greater Chicago area. And the other two were looking at the, um, the quality of soil that was from community gardens uh, within the Quad Cities region. So community gardens are spaces where people can, can share gardening space. And a lot of, a lot of this particularly immigrant uh, populations used to, to grow their own food. Um, and so uh, our students are, are considerably interested in environmental issues and environmental equity. So they were look, trying to research the quality of soil that uh, people are growing their, their food in. So we were doing some testing in the geochemistry lab. And this machine right here in the foreground is our X-ray fluorescent spectrometer. That allows us to analyze the chemistry of, of water samples, of rock samples, soils, anything like that. We just crush it up and we put it in there and we can get the elemental breakdown and um, of, of what is in there. It's a really powerful instrument and, and most of our students use this in some capacity. Uh, we've had students working on senior inquiry projects in gemology in the last few years. So they, and sometimes they're doing uh, experimental work with gemstones, trying to see how heat treating them improves their quality. 
and we've been collaborating with a local gemologist who also teaches a gemology course on campus, which is basically a course that focuses on gemstones and the economics of, of the business. We have a sedimentology lab with some standard equipment in here. Here, Catherine is working with, the, uh, with a magnetic separator here, running samples through it to get um, some of the magnetic grains separated from that. And she was actually uh, obtaining samples that she could do some uh, um, geochronology research on. We have standard equipment to crush rocks up. We have fossil prep equipment as well. And um, all of our labs are set up to do sort of this dirty work as well. And a lot of students are involved in this kind of stuff. Um, paleontology, Dr. Arkel has a beautiful microscope to be imaging um, small fossils and doing projects on that. So students uh, work with this kind of equipment both in her classes and for senior inquiry. And we have Oops, there's a mis... No, that's right. Um, we have what's affectionately known as the Volcano Lab. I have a better photograph of it, which is the Igneous Petrology Laboratory. And this is a series of high pressure, high temperature ovens. Dr. Wolf, I'm gonna let you talk a little bit about this. So, so this is basically a, a glorified oven that basically simulates the conditions in magma chambers, about 10 miles underground, about 1,000 degrees centigrade hot enough to melt rock and it's basically applied chemistry we look at the crystals that grow and the kinds of rocks that we can melt and then we analyze the textures and the compositions to figure out what is happening deep underground so one of the our principles here that we believe very strongly in is that students ought to have experience both in the field and in laboratories working with various types of analytical equipment, experimental equipment, and looking at things up close using whatever tools we have at our um, availability. So students spend a lot of time working on this and the faculty work very closely with the students, especially on their senior inquiry projects. We're walking with them. The students have a lot of freedom to kind of choose the direction that they go with their senior inquiry, but we help guide them along the way and help provide the resources that they need to do their work. And that includes funding for their research, if they have travel expenses or analytical expenses, we typically have funds that we can help um, pay for that kind of work as well. But students do a wide variety of really interesting work, both in classes and in their senior inquiry work. So um, Lauren Judge here was actually working on the DNA, analyzing the DNA of some of the fossils that they brought back from um, Grand Cayman. All right, we're going to move pretty quickly because I think that we're going to run out of time and I want to make sure that students have plenty of time to ask us questions. So some quick pictures of students doing some stuff. Seniors every year, except for this year is the exception, um, every year each one of our seniors presents his or her senior inquiry at a meeting of the Geological Society of America. We were planning to go up to Duluth this spring, but that meeting got canceled, unfortunately. But every year we take all of the seniors to give their presentations and we take all of the junior geology majors who are just beginning their senior inquiry work. And the department pays for that entire trip to go to the meeting wherever it is. Usually it's within a few hours drive and we spend several days there and come back. So you can see the students here with their poster tubes and they presented their posters there um, of, of the work that they did. And going to those meetings is, is just a tremendous experience. Um, and here is one student from last year who did a really interesting project studying mammoth teeth. And he's now in a graduate program in Tennessee, actually basically continuing uh, a project very, very similar to this, that he figured out the migrational paths of mammoth in the Midwest by looking at the isotopes in their teeth and this tooth we had in our collections. So let's talk really quickly about graduate school opportunities and careers. About a half to two thirds of our students end up going to graduate school eventually in something related to the geosciences. And many of them end up um, going straight into graduate school after college and a few of them take a year or two and then, and then think about what they really want to study. 
a lot of our students end up going into industry to get jobs and they're very successful at finding jobs. This is just a little infographic that we really like that we came upon because it actually shows a lot of students want to pursue careers in the environmental services industries, uh, doing environmental consulting, cleaning up environmental messes and so forth. And this actually shows this segment of the circle here. These are all jobs, careers over here on the right. And this part that's colored red is the environmental services industry. And what it shows is that most people who go into those kinds of jobs actually have backgrounds in geology. Quite a few geology majors go into oil and natural gas. I'm guessing there aren't gonna be many jobs there for the next year or two, but eventually that's gonna bounce back as well. And then a lot of people go into research and um, academia as well. So we'd be happy to talk more about career opportunities, but suffice to say that, that our students are very successful in pursuing really good careers. That is as much as I wanted to get through in our presentation. So I wanted to pause and either let my colleagues pitch in with anything that I missed or uh, also let the students have a few minutes to talk because I think Eric Rowell is going to tell us that our time is up soon. Let me, let me just point out the bottom of this slide Students are not aware that when, when you get a science degree in geology in particular, and you're interested in, in pursuing a graduate degree, you actually get paid to go to school to, to get that degree. So it, 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 it's an interesting turn of events. Yeah, Any questions from anybody? Questions at all? You know, type them in. Hopefully we can get them answered. We've got a couple of minutes left. All right, thanks, Eric. Any other questions? Oh, I'm so glad you joined us, Ella. So yeah, let's talk about that. There's a lot of overlap between geology and our environmental studies program. If you really wanna study the science of the environment, then you probably wanna get into geology or biology and, and especially ecology. If you're interested in policy and issues of sustainability, um, environmental studies is, is a fantastic major and actually combining the two is terrific. So we have some students who successfully major in both programs or major in one and minor in the other one. Yeah. Casey, it looked like you wanted to add something. Um, throughout most of your undergraduate career and then lots of students towards towards the end of their junior year and senior year really start to focus in and and lots of students find you know they think they're interested in one thing and then they change their mind and then they maybe change it again and that's the beautiful thing about liberal arts and and, and our major you know the the discipline of geology is very broad and you can be interested in different things and you can change your mind and we encourage all of that and um, exploration and being in the field and being in the lab we think helps kind of you know drive that that eventual focus, but, but we definitely don't focus on that right away. Unless you really know what you want, then, then great, go for it. So Allison, can I put you on the spot? From the student's perspective, you're a junior. Tell them a little bit about your experiences as a, as a geology major and econ as well. Okay. Well, um, I joined the major after I took 105. I um, mentioned that earlier. Uh, that was a really big turning point for me. Um, I've taken a broad variety of courses in the major and through the Bonaire trip uh, really focused in on uh, tectonics and geomorphology and that's where my SI is currently going. Uh, oh, it's going to keep going that way. Let me say it that way. Sorry, that sounded weird. Um, <laughs> it's not changing. <laughs> um, and yes, I have a minor in economics, which I'm finishing this semester. And that was a really great way to um, just kind of explore my interests outside of geology and take some of those environmental policy courses that Dr. Strasser just mentioned. Um, we offer those in the econ department as well. So that's, that's been a really great opportunity. How am I doing on time? Anything else I can add? Well, at this point in time, we are going to have to close out the, uh, the session here because there's another one coming in after us. I uh, just want to thank all of our faculty um, for, for doing this. It's really important for us to engage with our students. Um, both uh, students that are uh, interested in coming to Augustana this current year, uh, but also thinking about us in the future uh, with juniors. So uh, thank you guys very much. Um, all of our faculty are available. So if you want to reach out to them, 
Um, certainly you can do so. Their information is on our website um, as far as their email and phone numbers. But uh, we're very excited that you have interest in Augustana College. And uh, I look forward to hopefully chatting with you guys again. If you have any questions about admissions, by all means, again, I'm Eric Rowell. You can contact me directly as well. But thank you all very much uh, for this wonderful session. And again, um, stay safe at home. And uh, I look forward to chatting with you guys again soon. Take care, guys. Thanks a lot, Eric. Nice to meet everybody. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Stay safe.